The next session coming up is about welcome to the broadband gigabit generation, so the gigabit generation. It's going to be presented to you all by ATX Networks. And if you're wondering where their booth is, it's straight across there. I'm staring right at them now. Again, if you're out there in the hall, come on in. Make yourself comfortable. We're just about to get started. And as I mentioned, this is about the distributed access architecture. And in particular, the folks at ATX have a solution that are working with the folks at Cox to put together a 10 gigabit Ethernet optical DWDM wavelength solution that is instrumental to Cox's strategy. And you're going to hear all about that from Charlie Vogt. Vogt is the uh, president and CEO of ATX Networks. He's going to be joined by Jay Lee, chief technology officer, access networking at ATX Networks, and T. Harton, senior director, OSP engineering at Cox Communications. And with that, please welcome the gentleman to the stage. Come on out, gentlemen. Thank you very much. My name is Charlie Vogt, the CEO of ATX, and uh, I have the pleasure of sitting in on a, on a great topic that, uh, that frankly was the result of some amazing innovation that we partnered with Cox that's now available to all the MSOs around the world. And as most of us equipment suppliers are trying to solve for today is, is really where are we fitting in as it relates to Doxus 3.1 and distributed access architecture. For ATX specifically, we've been focused from the core to the home. Uh, we're excited about a lot of the new innovation that we've been working on, and specifically today, we have an opportunity to share with you some new innovation that we work specifically with Cox uh, as it relates to our ability to uh, enable uh, the core to the next generation node, and I'm excited to introduce uh, Jay Lee, who's our CTO, and uh, T. Harden, who uh, represents Cox. So with that, uh, Jay, I'll turn it over to you. OK, um, I'd just like to start off and uh, say thank you very much for, to T uh, for joining us to help present uh, the, uh, the OCML solution that, uh, that, that was conceived by Cox. And, uh, and, and ATX was fortunate enough to be a partner and, and, and develop the solution for them. Um, T, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do in Cox, and what your, what your team's focus is in Cox. Uh, yeah. I'm in the outside plant uh, construction and engineering group. Uh, I lead the engineering team focused on architecture and field engineering support for all of our systems cross country. Um, so as we started talking about doing distributed access architecture and remote FI, you know, a few things became very relevant very quickly that we were going to need to look at a way to transport a large number of 10 gig wavelengths out to a given node service area. Um, but we wanted to do that in a passive way, try to keep our power demands on the outside plant down as low as possible. Um, there was a good power uh, conversation yesterday during a session and they talked about the increased load of that remote fires will put on outside plant power. So it was important to minimize that as much as possible. Obviously, we want to look at minimizing the footprint of our facilities, which kind of drove a, a distributed access kind of decision in the first place. And then look at a way to be able to quickly migrate nodes and service areas over to remote fi. Tall order. A tall order. So um, just, just, just to paint the picture a little, little more clearly for folks uh, as it relates to what, what Cox was challenged with as they moved to distributed access architecture, for, for not necessarily for all MSOs, but certainly for Cox, uh, Node Plus Zero and DAA are, are safe to say almost synonymous. Um, and and as, as T alluded to, the, 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 big, the big issue for them was when they blow up a node serving area from, from one node as shown in the, in the top left of this slide to uh, multiple node, node plus zero nodes, RPD based nodes, they've now, now got the challenge of, you know, how, how am I going to deliver connectivity to, to all of these nodes over um, what Cox has is a, is a, is a re redundant fiber ring, right? 
Uh, maybe you could elaborate, T, on, on some of the other requirements that you were challenged with uh, while, while you were having your team come up with this yeah, solution. Probably, yeah, Jay, I guess probably two, two and a half years ago, um, some bright engineers at Cox sat down and said, look, do we got to solve this problem? Um, how can we get large number of those 10 gig wavelengths out to the node with, you know, most of our nodes are, are fairly close to our facilities, but we do have some, you know, longer links that can reach up to 60 kilometers. Um, Cox, we have the benefit generally of a ring and ring architecture. So generally we'll have two fibers out to a node serving area, but and we want to preserve that where it's available. Um, and really looked at a, a passive outside, but active inside solution that could potentially transport all those wavelengths. You know, a parent node, depending on density, can go anywhere from 10 to 12, 14 remote phi nodes in that serving area. Also want to serve, you know, business customers, potentially some cell backhaul. So there's lots of opportunities for, you know, 10 gig out in the, in the area. Um, and this solution was, we started with a spec writing process that lasted about six months, um, engaged a lot of vendor partners across the industry, went through a, an RFP and a lot of testing. And what we ended up with was the OCML which is the head end piece and the MDM, which is the passive optical splitter out in the node. Good deal. And I guess other two, two requirements obviously go without saying is operational simplicity and, and cost are pretty significant. Oh yeah. Always, right? Always. So. Right. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna, uh, we're gonna dive under the covers um, in, in subsequent slides with respect to some of the underlying technology that uh, that enabled, uh, enabled us to, to get to a solution that, that met the requirements we just outlined. Uh, this is a high level overview of, um, of basically, as, as Cox deems it, the, uh, the OCML, Optical Communication Module Link Extender. The e, I'm not sure why the E never made it into the, uh, into the acronym, but uh, ATX term has branded it uh, the GigaWave, but T maybe at, at, at a high level, you could you could discuss the two elements of the solution and and just paint the picture for everybody here okay. as to what it's doing. It, it's architecturally, it's very simple. As, as a in implementation, it's quite complex. But um, on the left side, where it says digital transport in the middle, um, you've essentially got a, a filter that combines. 40 wavelengths, 20 downstream, 20 upstream, to carry those 20 10 gig links into essentially a bi-directional EDFA. That EDFA bumps the signal in the nor on the um, downstream side, combines it in with a pond wavelength perhaps, and then um, with some optical switches and some detection circuitry, launches it on a primary and a backup fiber out to the device on the right, which is the MDM, which is essentially a, a 40 channel MUX with some you know, optical monitoring ports that allow the craft to keep, you know, to, to troubleshoot and maintain the network. But those links can go essentially 40 to 60 kilometers and still hit the necessary receive power on the SFP pluses at the in in customer device, be it an RPD or 10 gig router. And so outside, completely passive, goes in a fiber, op, you know, fiber optic splice tray. Um, that was important not to, not to have power, not to have a cabinet, to try and minimize our footprint as much as possible. All of the amplification happens in the head end, which is kind of where you want it. Right. And uh, working great. All right. We'll just drill into uh, a little bit, a little bit more detail with respect to uh, the, the OCML GigaWave solution. Um, you know, number one is is how are we achieving uh, 20 10 gig links uh, across across route redundant paths over a range of uh, five to 60 kilometers. And and as T mentioned, in essence, it's the uh, it's the head end OCML piece with uh, bidirectional um, EDFAs. Um, integrated into it. 
it's it's 20 channel uh, muxes on the downstream uh, demuxes on the upstream that that really really allow this uh, device to to uh, aggregate or deaggregate depending which perspective you're looking at it uh, on and off the uh, on and off the fiber um, obviously the amplification comes into play uh, depending on the distances we're trying to traverse like T said in the in the in the outside uh, outside element, the MDM, uh, the, key, the key piece is uh, highly integrated uh, DWDM MUX, DMUX, so that basically feeds from RPD nodes can be aggregated or de-aggregated uh, as required. From a resilience, re resiliency standpoint, uh, Cox, Cox has a, a, a ring architecture out to, to all their nodes, and obviously it's something that uh, they wanted to leverage uh, in order to inherently be, be route redundant out to that node serving area. Obviously a good strategy if you want to maintain uptime to customers. Uh, because, the, because, and I'll work back from the MDM to the head end, uh, because uh, Cox wanted um, a passive solution in the field, this MDM is, is the head of this MDM is as, as simple as a, an optical two-way combiner. So, you know, from a field perspective, uh, f the fiber is essentially active. Um, when you move into the head end, that's where, that's where all the smarts are. And based on uh, upstream traffic sensing, there's a, there's a, uh, a very, very high sensitivity optical switch. And, and you can't underestimate that given the fact that we could be, we could be putting anywhere from uh, basically two to 40 wavelengths uh, along these links and the links themselves range from f five to uh, 60 kilometers. So the dynamic range associated with an optical sensing switch is, is very challenging to deal with and fortunate for us, we've got optical experts that can, can handle that type of thing. So really that's, that's ultimately, you know, from, from a route redundant perspective, how, how res resiliency is, is managed across the ring, um, inherently resilient because of the all passive nature in the field. And then the other piece is, you know, ultimately is the integration of, of all of the core building blocks or technologies uh, into, into a, a concise product. And just it, rather than building this in separate piece parts, it's obviously uh, you know, far more resilient to, to build it as a, as a complete product. And it's got an OTD or R port. Exactly. That's so very yeah, important. Good, good segue. So from an from a uh, operational simplicity standpoint, um, you know, th there are other solutions to, to, uh, to satisfy route redundancy. Uh, we could look at a layer two type of solution, which is far more complex, far more costly, but Cox chose to keep everything at physical layer. I think it's a, it was a great, great decision to, to make. And as, as T had mentioned, one of the other big, big elements here is, uh, and this was laid in the specification, was the addition of, of OTDRs so that, you know, if you switch from A side to B side and you need to troubleshoot where that fiber cut is, you can very easily, uh, with a technician can very easily find out where, where this is without disturbing um, any, any of the service. And the last piece, just from a cost effectiveness standpoint, I mentioned the fact that uh, you know, layer, layer, a layer one solution is, is definitely more operationally simplistic. It is also, uh, we've, we've run the numbers from a, from a CapEx standpoint, power consumption standpoint. Uh, it, it definitely blows away a, a layer two type solution. And once again, from a cost standpoint, obviously integrating all these, all these core elements into, into a concise product really helps to uh, bring costs down. The only other checklist I didn't put on this was uh, procurement department. They do a uh, wonderful job at, at bringing costs down as well. But yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's ultimately you know, some of the details around both the OCML and, and the MDM as, as ATX is branded at uh, GigaWave. Go ahead, Charlie. You know, if you look at where we're at right now uh, with the deployment of GigaWave and, and you look at where Cox is at in their deployment of distributed access architecture, certainly with some great presentations this morning, but I think this is further validation that Remote Fi uh, and the evolution of, of uh, DOCSIS 3.1 is on its way, and you guys are certainly uh, leading in, in that particular area. Can you just give everybody maybe a quick update as to where Cox is on the overall deployment schedule? Yeah, we're, uh, we've actually got live customers on Remote Fi now. Uh, it's been a 
fun journey, but we're there, um, and, and it's everything's working well. We started with some trials in a couple of markets. We now have, you know, like I said, live customers in uh, one of our markets, quickly moving to a second. Our plans are to start doubling that footprint in next year. So uh, remote file will be taken off in a big way for us. And as well, we, it relates to, you, you, you now see more use cases for, for the OCML. And, and I mean, we were exposed to it as Cox was contemplating their move to no yep. plus zero. But uh, since then, there's been yeah, commercial, yeah, commercial changes, apps. Right? Yeah, Harj uh, spoke to it yesterday during uh, one of his sessions. But um, so we've tested 200, co uh, 200 gig coherent links through the OCML now and uh, work great. So obviously, you know, what I mentioned early on, sell backhaul, RPD, business customers that need high, you know, high wavelength, ser I mean, high bandwidth services to their location, um, remote uh, OLTs, um, lots of things are possible with this transport solution. And that's, that's, that's kind of why we liked it, right? We've got lots of flexibility, getting lots of bandwidth out to a small serving area that we can use for all of those different applications. Now, what about the use case for the for this this type of solution in a N plus X environment? Is that something Cox will will, will be considering? It's possible, right? If, if, and we've looked at as we do node splits. Do we want to think about migrating those nodes to remote FI devices to kind of minimize any kind of regrettable spend in the you know in the future? And certainly, we would use OCML and MDM as part of that strategy to position those nodes for, you know, eventual migration to fiber deep node zero. Okay. Okay. Well, Cox has certainly been a great innovation partner uh, for us, and we certainly appreciate all the insights that you provided in, in leading to this uh, technology, because uh, it certainly has uh, opened the door not only for you, but it's given us a path to be able to introduce this technology to your peers around the world. Well, I'm, I'm just lucky I get to sit up here and talk about all of the wonderful work that a lot of bright guys put in to make this happen. And just to, just to close off, uh, from an ATX perspective, um, as Charlie said, to reiterate, we've been very excited to, to bring the OCML solution um, as, it, as it relates to Cox's architecture, but uh, we certainly think this is just, just the uh, tip of the iceberg with, with respect to what we can do with this technology. We see possibilities for um, more wavelengths on the fiber perhaps, driving, driving, uh, driving more wavelengths deeper into the network uh, in a redundant or non-redundant manner. Uh, we've got a couple examples here that, uh, that, that you know, we, we've um, designed out at, at a high level at this point with respect to pushing 40 wavelengths 100 kilometers or even 160 kilometers in, in some instances. Or the technology can be used in a, in a different type of uh, topology than a, in, a, in a star ring type, uh, type of architecture. So we're, uh, we're very excited about it. And um, you know, any, anyone who's interested, please drop by our booth and uh, we'd be happy to chat more about it. And we're uh, booth 1301, um, ATX Network. Thank you. Thanks.